Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chocolate almond breakfast donuts. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to make gluten-free, grain-free, low-carb, high-protein donuts that are healthy enough to eat for breakfast without all the guilt and shame. And you might be thinking, that sounds great, but they must taste terrible like all quote-unquote healthy donuts. Well, that's the thing, they don't. They taste good, really good, especially covered in chocolate. But we'll get into all the loopholes later. For now, let's get started with one of the easiest batters we've ever done, which is going to start with two whole large eggs, to which we will add a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil or the liquid fat of your choice. Okay, I went with something neutral in flavor here, but you can do melted butter or coconut oil, or speaking of healthy, extra virgin olive oil. And then we are going to need to sweeten this up a little bit. And for that, I'm going to use some maple syrup. And that's it. We'll go ahead and take a whisk and mix this very enthusiastically for a couple minutes until everything becomes beautifully emulsified and a little bit foamy. Oh, and if you wanted to add a little bit of vanilla extract here, that would be fine. And I actually did in one of the test batches. And to be honest, I really didn't notice a big difference. So I'll leave that up to you. But anyway, once we have that mixed up, we'll stop and move on to the dry ingredients. Starting with the most important, some finely ground almond flour. And by the way, not all almond flours are ground the same way. So if you want yours to come out exactly like mine using the same amount, you're going to have to get yours from a guy named Bob who lives in a red mill down by the river. But having said that, anything ground similar to this should work out fine. And then we'll finish this off with some baking powder, a little bit of salt, and then a couple spoons of a high quality Dutch processed cocoa. Oh yeah, that's the pretty one that has that beautiful deep red brown color. And then once everything's been bowled, we'll take a spatula and give this a thorough mixing. And if you're wondering why didn't you mix up all the dry ingredients first like you usually do, or at the very least break up all those clumps of almond meal, well that is a good question. And that's because almond flour does not contain any gluten, so there is absolutely no danger in overmixing this batter. Okay, you could mix this for an hour and nothing bad would happen, other than maybe a sore shoulder. But anyway, the point is we will mix that fearlessly until all that almond flour has disappeared, at which point we can set that aside and we'll move on to prep our donut pan, which looks like this. And they say this is already nonstick, but they say a lot of things. So to hedge our bets, we will also give this a generous spray with some vegetable oil. And yes, you can just brush that in instead or use some softened butter. And then the easiest way to get our batter into the pan would be to transfer it into a piping bag or one of these plastic zip top bags. And I don't do a lot of freeze frames, but I'm gonna do one here, since I was just about to use my finger to clean off the spatula, which would have been a bad idea, since this batter is extremely sticky. So what we really wanna do is use the inside of the bag to wipe off the spatula, thereby keeping our fingers nice and clean. And then once that's been transferred in, and we sorta of pushed it all together, we will take our scissors and cut about an inch off the corner, and that should allow us to very efficiently and effectively, and without making a big mess, transfer this into our pan. Oh, and did I mention these are also high fiber? At least compared to a regular donut. But anyway, we'll go ahead and pipe in our batter as evenly as we can. And in a perfect world, when we got to that last one, we would have used up all our batter. But that world has not been discovered yet. And we're probably going to be left with a little bit still in the bag. So we will just go around adding a little more to each one wherever we think it makes sense. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and use our finger to press down and even out the tops, but not with a dry finger, right? We're gonna to wanna to dip it in water first, since as I mentioned, this batter is extremely sticky. And that's it, once we have all our batter pressed down and evenly distributed, we'll go ahead and give that the old tapa tapa on the counter to settle that batter down even more, at which point these are ready to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about nine or 10 minutes, or until they look like this. But as you know, we try not to go by looks in the kitchen. So we'll wanna to check to make sure a skewer comes out clean, which mine did. And then what we need to do is let these sit in the pan for 10 minutes, so they don't break apart when we turn them out. So we will wait 600 seconds, at which point we should be able to safely turn over the pan to reveal some pretty gorgeous looking donuts and some relatively light ones at that. Okay, some of these almond flour recipes are super dense and heavy, but this one was not. And then, like virtually every delicious baked good we want to eat right away, we cannot eat this one right away. For best results, we really do want to let these cool down to room temp, which is fine. 
because that's going to give us time to decorate these, which I'm going to do first by dipping the tops in some melted chocolate. And contrary to popular belief, if you use a nice high percentage chocolate, it really doesn't contain a lot of sugar. And don't even get me started on the antioxidants. And yes, believe it or not, additional fiber. So if you can, try to use something that's like 70 or 80% cacao, even though I'm cheating and using something that's 63. But anyway, I went ahead and dipped those in chocolate and then smoothed out the tops a little bit with a spoon before I moved on to garnishing the tops. And for that, I'm going to do a couple dipped in toasted coconut flakes. And if you're a fan of the good old-fashioned Almond Joy candy bar, I think that would be the way to go. So I did two with coconut and then moved on to do a couple more with chopped almonds. And I was originally going to use sliced, but then I thought it looked too similar to the coconut, and I decided to do them roughly chopped instead. And by the way, while your chocolate coating is still wet, you are able to do any kind of adjusting and fine-tuning you want. And then for the two middle ones, I was just going to leave those plain chocolate, but after looking at the garnishes on either side, I decided they needed a little something. So I went around and applied a few chocolate chips. Which, by the way, Michelle thought was a big mistake. She thought those were redundant, unnecessary, and distracting. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are after all the Samuel Morris, of whether your donut looks like a stegosaurus. But regardless of what you garnish with, we're going to want to let those donuts cool completely, and for that chocolate on top to firm up before we serve. But once it does, we can go ahead and bite in. And that, my friends, considering the ingredients we used, is a pretty impressive chocolate donut. All right, lots of chocolatey flavor. And even though it makes up most of the batter, the flavor of almond does not overpower everything else. And here you can see they have a very similar crumb and texture to a regular cake donut, which reminds me that's not what you're supposed to compare these to. I mean, come on, we didn't use flour or butter or white sugar. So to compare these to a regular chocolate donut is not really fair. What these should be compared to are those expensive, uninteresting, virtually tasteless, energy bars a lot of people eat for breakfast. Okay, these are way better than those. But anyway, I finished up that coconut version. And then I went ahead and plated up one with the chopped almonds so I could get some shots of it in its natural habitat next to a nice hot cup of coffee. Although in the spirit of full disclosure, it was too late for coffee. So I just faked it with some tea and milk. That's right, that's prop coffee. Or as we call it in the business, kofefe. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling chocolate almond breakfast donuts. I'm going to go ahead and finish up with one final test. Will it dunk? And yes, it dunks. It dunks real good. But whether you dip or just bite and sip, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.